Welcome to this presentation, which is part of the Water Accounting and Water Productivity using WAPOR course. The topic today is about the quality assessment of the WAPOR database. My name is Marloes Mull and I work at IHC Delft Institute for Water Education. This presentation has been prepared by IHC Delft in the framework of the project using remote sensing in support of solutions to reduce agricultural water productivity gaps funded by the government of the Netherlands and led by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Today, I'm going to discuss the following items starting with the development of the WAPOR database and the different versions that led to the current database. Then I will give a brief recap of the WAPOR dataset and the definition of water productivity, followed by a detailed review of three of the WAPOR data layers, namely evapotranspiration, biomass production and water productivity. In 2017, the first beta version of the WAPOR database was launched, starting with the continental level data at 250 meter resolution to launching the first pilot area at 30 meter resolution in November 2017. Following internal quality assessments by project partners, WAPO version 1.0 was launched in February 2018. Detailed quality assessment reports further informed the improvement made in developing version 2. Some key improvements made to the database include improvements made to the soil moisture product which resulted in increased ET and biomass production in irrigated areas. Another update was that the version 1 used a fixed above over total biomass fraction for all land use classes. Version 2 now uses total biomass production, including underground. WAPO version 2 was officially launched on the 17th of June 2019 during the International Seminar on Drought in Agriculture in Rome. The WAPOR database contains three levels with different spatial and temporal resolution. Level 1 at 250 meter resolution is available for the African continent and the Middle East region. Level 2 data at 100 meter resolution is available for selected countries and river basins. Finally, level 3 data is available for selected areas with more detailed information including a crop map. At all levels, data is available at decadal, monthly and annual time steps. The main layers which are available in each level include biomass water productivity, actual evapotranspiration and interception, net primary production, above ground biomass and phenology, which represents the cropping season. In addition, a land cover classification based on Copernicus data is available. The main objective of the database is to evaluate water productivity. In this presentation, I focus on the biophysical water productivity in terms of the amount of crop per drop of water. This is calculated in the WAPOR database as the total biomass production divided by the evapotranspiration, defined in WAPOR as the gross water productivity, or divided by transpiration, defined as the net water productivity over the cropping season. Since the launch of version 1 of WAPOR, several reports and papers have been produced which evaluate the different layers of the database. The WAPOR Quality Assessment Report published by FAO and IHC Delft provides a comprehensive evaluation of all the WAPOR layers of the version 1. Blatchford and Weerle Singer provide a detailed evaluation of the actual evapotranspiration layers by comparing them to other remote sensing products uh, by Weerle Singer and to ground observation by Blatchford. In this presentation, I will present a snapshot of the conclusions from these publications, where I will be focusing on the key layers important for calculating water productivity, namely biomass water production and evapotranspiration. In the end, I will also reflect on the water productivity layer provided in a WAPOR portal. The first layer we are going to look at is the evapotranspiration layer. Next to WAPOR, there are several different global evapotranspiration datasets. An overview for annual ET in 2009 is presented in this slide, which show large variability between the different products with different spatial and temporal resolution. So how do we decide which product is the best? 
To evaluate the ET layer, we use the water balance as a proxy for checking the quality. We equated the basin level precipitation minus the discharge from the GRDC database to evapotranspiration for selected river basins. The comparison showed that all products show high correlation, around 0.9, with Gleam and Modus showing large deviation of above 25%, whereas only Vapor and Sabop have less than 5% error at annual timescale. Further analysis were done in the Litani River Basin in Lebanon, which initially did not show good agreement between the observed discharge and the remote sensing data. However, when including an, an interbasin transfer, the results are much more encouraging. Blatchford compared the VAPO ET data with eddy covariance tower data, showing good agreement along the one on one line, but with large scatter. This could also be related to the temporal resolution of the different data sets. The main conclusion from the publications is that VAPO is generally performing well and is at the top of its class. In addition, VAPO has the highest spatial resolution compared to the other ET data, and the data is provided near real time. Detailed evaluation showed VAPO overestimates when ETA is low and in irrigated areas. It does not perform well in human conditions with high ET values. More information can be found in the mentioned publications. The second layer we evaluated is the biomass production layer, which is derived from the net primary production. There are no direct measurements for biomass production, so the layer has to be converted using information from the field to calculate the harvestable and fresh product. This information includes identification of the crop, including the location, crop calendar, crop parameters such as harvest index and moisture content. This is then compared to the observed yield. An example of the comparison done is the sugarcane irrigation scheme in Wonji, Ethiopia, where the biomass production was converted to yield. Um, with individual fields having different cropping seasons, the calculations used a fixed crop season with a duration of 18 months, harvest index of 1.0 and moisture content of 0.59, which were obtained from fieldwork by an IEG student. As the WAPO database is based on three C3 crops, a conversion factor for sugarcane, a C4 crop was also applied. The results show the average yield in the system being 100 ton per hectare, which is about the same as reported by the scheme manager. The large variation is also related to the range of actual crop season length and timing. Further analysis in Egypt showed similar results. Here the results of two crops grown in two different seasons are shown, winter wheat and maize. The values are very similar to the values obtained from literature. For the summer maize, there are areas with very low yields, which are likely fallow areas. The mean value is therefore closer to the literature value. The evaluation of the biomass production layer shows that by using standard conversion factors, WAPO is able to simulate accurately yield in various climates and for various crops. Because the parameters are defined from literature, it is not possible to provide information on how stresses and management practices, which influence harvest index and moisture content, affect the yield. Finally, we reviewed the WAPO water productivity layer. To be able to interpret the layers, it's important to understand what the layers represent. First, for level 1, the water productivity layer provides annual water productivity, whereas for level 2 and 3, the layer provides seasonal water productivity. For level 2 and 3, next to the uncertainties derived from the biomass and evapotranspiration layer, the water productivity layer is influenced by the phenology layer, which determines the crop season. The phenology layer is based on NDVI, which is highly dependent on cloud-free images. The quality assessment report showed this layer has low level of accuracy and better results are obtained when using information from the field regarding the crop season. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening and don't forget to check out our other videos.